Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Metri. Uh, but I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today and be the, uh, the, the Dharma speaker for today. And I hope some of the things we talk about um, will help us all wake up in some way. So I'm going to read to you a little bit. Uh, from the writings of Lin Ji. So Lin Ji Yixuan uh, is the founder of the Lin Ji School of Zen. Um, he lived in the ninth century uh, AD or CE, if you prefer common era. Um, and um, the Lin Ji School is the school that most of us in studying Zen have followed. It is the school where we study koans and use koans to assist in helping someone wake up. So Linji was the founder of this school uh, and he's famous for having written a record, the, the Linji Lu or the, the Rinzai Roku, they call it in Japanese. Uh, and he passed on a lot of his teachings and traditions uh, in this written work that he had left behind and has been translated into many languages and passed down, um, like I said, since about the ninth century of the common era. But something that caught my eye, I was actually reading about something else uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was reading, he has a passage in there about the total lack of importance of robes. And I was reading this because when I came to Vietnam, I brought my Wangesa here, or my my surplice, as we say in English, in English. But um, my gray robes were just too heavy and too bulky to pack away in my uh, suitcases as I was trying to travel lightly, um, and I was a little bit concerned about robes. And then I was reading Lin Ji's record about robes are just people wear robes. <laughs> Anyone wears a robe, you know. And so I I I, I let that go, but. About two pages prior to that in, in his book on the Rinzai Roku or the Linzi, Linji Lu, he wrote this, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was a really fascinating. It's a little bit of a story. And I want to thank Briar for my uh, uh, inspiration for tonight's talk. And he's going to see why here in a few minutes. So Linji wrote this. He said, followers of the way, my Buddha Dharma is that of the correct transmission a transmission that has continued in a single line through the masters Mai Yu, Dan Xia, Dao Yi, Lu Shan, and Shi Gong, and has spread abroad over all the world. Yet no one has faith in it, and everyone heaps slander on it. I read this, and I said to myself, wow, you know, modern day Zen masters, Never say, I come from a direct line of transmission, starting with Mai Yu, Dan Shi, Dao Yi, Lu Shan, and Shi Gong. Where do we all say they start? Nowadays, Zen masters will all tell us, I come from a direct line of mind transmission from the Buddha. From the Buddha to Mahakashapa, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Why didn't Linji, in approximately 850 AD, when he wrote this, why didn't he say, I come from a direct mind-to-mind -mind transmission from the Buddha to Mahakashapa, etc.? I'll tell you why. Because Chan masters had not invented the idea that they descended from Mahakashapa, from the Buddha. The first time we start to hear of Briar's famous, I don't know what to talk about tonight, but I'll just hold up a white flower and let you guys sit there and look at it. Briar inspired me to, to look into this. Because I thought to myself, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? Am I going to pull a briar and just hold up a flower and be quiet? Uh, no, briar's never done that. He jokes about doing it. Um, 
but I said to myself, where did this story come from? Because some of you know, I have studied the Pali Canon in great detail um, for several years. And uh, I, it's not in the Pali Canon. Where did this story come from? And why did Lin Ji leave it out when he was talking about the line of masters that he descends from? Well, as it turns out, the first time that what we call the flower sermon shows up is approximately 200 years after Lin Ji died. So after Lin Ji had died, uh, his school of koanic teaching, teaching koans, kongans as they would call them in Japan, in China, uh, or, or uh, public discourses, public trials, public cases, they would call them, these kongans would descend from. The first time that this idea that the Buddha held up a single flower occurred in approximately the 11th century. And the first time we know that it was recorded was when Wu Menhuika, who is popular nowadays for having written the Gateless Gateway or the Gateless Barrier, that collection of 48 koans, he included it in his collection of koans in the sixth koan. And this is the first time that we in modern, the modern world um, have this story that we call the Flower Sermon recorded. And here's what Woman stated, and this is the story that we all know. And this is the sixth koan in his No Gate Gateway. Long ago, on, on Spirit Vulture Peak, Shakyamuni Buddha, the world honored one, held, up a, held a flower up and revealed it to the Sangha. Everyone sat in shadowy silence. Then Mahakashapa's face broke into the faintest smile. The world honored one said, I possess the perfect dharma of the eye's treasure house, the nirvana of mind's mystery depths, the true form of formlessness, the subtle mystery of the dharma gate, not relying on words and texts, outside teaching and beyond doctrine. I hear and trust all of that to Mahakashapa. That's the flower sermon, at least that's the flower sermon in its modern translation by David Hinton. Um, but that's the story. Sitting on Vulture Peak, the Buddha had a, a Dharma lesson, and his lesson was silence, and he held up the flower. And I said to myself, wow, what an interesting story. How does the Pali Canon deal with this transmission? Because clearly, those of you who, who have studied the Buddha's um, Parinibbana Sutta, you know that the Buddha had two principal deputies, chief monks, as he might have called them, uh, Mahamogalana and Shariputra. And Shariputra uh, was the chief among those, and then Mahamogalana was the second. But if you know from the, the Buddha's Parinibbana Sutta, you know that both of these men died uh, passed into their Parinibbana um, some months before the Buddha did. They had both basically um, known that the chief disciples of the Buddha would always pass away before the Buddha himself would. Um, and then there are separate sutras and separate stories on both uh, Mahamogalana and on Shariputra who had gone away um, in the case of Shariputra, he went back to his mother's home. His mother had never accepted the Buddha Dharma. He went back and he taught her um, and, and, and helped enlighten her, help her become a stream enterer, as they would call it in the Pali tradition. And, uh, and then he passed away. So um, the Buddha of the old original monks, um, there was only one really left that was still in the Buddha Sangha, and that was Mahakashapa. And so, as tradition goes in the, in, in, in the Buddha Dharma around the world, and in almost all monastic traditions, seniority plays a big role in how authority is passed down. And that was also the case with Mahamogalan, I mean, with Mahakashapa. Um, but that's not 
all that happened. And so what we know about the story of Mahakashapa is what I want to share with you. So despite the fact that the flower sutra or the, the flower sermon shows up not until the 11th century in China, what we have in a contemporary or mostly contemporary form that was passed down through oral tradition through the Pali Canon was the story that Mahakashapa tells in the Samyutta Nikaya. And he tells a story of his own um, his own enlightenment and his own learning from the Buddha. And I want to read that to you. It's only a few short paragraphs, but it's, it's the Pali story of how the Buddha passed his transmission to Mahakashapa. And Mahakashapa says this, when I had thus gone forth, I was traveling along a road when I saw the Blessed One sitting at the Bahaputta shrine between Rajagaha and Nalanda. Having seen him, I thought, if I should ever see the teacher, it is the Blessed One himself that I would see. If I should ever see the Fortunate One, it is the Blessed One himself that I would see. If I should ever see the Perfectly Enlightened One, it is the Blessed One himself that I would see. Then I prostrated myself right there at the Blessed One's feet and said to him, Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my teacher. I am his disciple. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my teacher. I am his disciple. When I had said this, the Blessed One said to me, Kashapa, if one who does not know and see should say to a disciple so single-minded as yourself, I know, I see, his head would split. But knowing Kashapa, I say, I know. Seeing, I say, I see. Therefore, Kashapa, you should train yourself thus. I will arise a keen sense of shame and fear of wrongdoing towards elders, the newly ordained, and those of middle status. Thus should you train yourself. Therefore, Kasapa, you should train yourself thus. Whenever I listen to any Dhamma connected with the wholesome, I will listen to it with eager ears, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, applying my whole mind to it. Thus you should train yourself. Therefore, Kashapa, you should train yourself thus. I will never relinquish mindfulness directed to the body associated with joy. Thus, you should train yourself. Then, having given me this exhortation, the Blessed One rose from his seat and departed. For seven days, friend, I ate the country's alms food as a debtor. But on the eighth day, final knowledge arose in me. Then, friend, the Blessed One descended from the road and went to the foot of a tree. I folded in four my outer robe of patches and said to him, Venerable Sir, let the Blessed One sit down here. This will lead to my welfare and happiness for a long time. The Blessed One sat down on the appointed seat and said to me, Your outer robe of patches is soft, Kashapa. Venerable Sir, let the Blessed One accept my outer robe of patches out of compassion. Then will you wear my worn out hemp and rag robes? I will, Venerable Sir. Thus I offered the Blessed One my outer robe of patches and received from him his worn out hemp and robe of rag, his worn out hemp and rag robes. If Fran, one speaking rightly, could say of anyone, he is a son of the Blessed One, born of his breast, born of his mouth, born of the Dhamma, created by the Dhamma, an heir to the Dhamma, a receiver of worn out hemp and rag robes, it is of me that one could rightly say this. So here was Mahakashapa's enlightenment story, where he had gone forth already as a monk, but he had not met the Buddha. He was not following the Buddha's Dharma. But when he saw the Buddha on the road, he knew that he was the enlightened one, and he the perfectly enlightened one. And he went to him, uh, he prostrated himself on the ground, and he learned a lesson from the Buddha. And the Buddha told him, you know, always maintain this mindfulness. And if you do so, um, you know, then... then then you will, you will feel the fruits of the joy that come from this emancipation. And, you know, so after meeting the Buddha Mahakashapa, um, he, he practiced this mindfulness for eight days, and on the eighth day, he truly awakened. So there we see that the Buddha came back, and they met each other again, and Mahakashapa, out of reverence, had taken his robe. And remember, these people would take these robes, they would get rags, whether it was rags from... Um, the charnel grounds, the, the cemeteries, or wherever they would get them, they would get them, sew them together, and make a robe out of them. 
And Mahakashapa was actually famous. There are several suttas in the Pali Canon about Mahakashapa's robes and how he always wore these old robes that he had made himself and they were always raggedy. Uh, but in this instance, he had made it and put it into a mat for the Buddha to sit on. The Buddha commented how soft it was. And the two men there exchanged robes. And that was the story of the Buddha in the Pali Canon. That's the story of the Buddha exchanging robes with Mahakashapa and recognizing that Mahakashapa was his son of the Dharma. Um, there are many suttas. There's another, there's actually another koan that woman collected in the, in the uh, No Gate Gateway where Ananda comes and says, uh, hey, uh, Mahakashapa, besides that beautiful brocade robe that the Buddha left for you, um, what else did the Buddha, wh what else did the Buddha leave for you? And in the, in the koan, Kashapa says to Ananda, Ananda, you know that flag flying outside the front that says we're going to have a Dharma talk today? Go tear it down. Tear down the whole fucking flagpole as, as well. And that was the end of it. Um, and that was the koan. And the koan there was to think about, well, you know, what did the Buddha leave behind to Kashapa besides a robe? But also, you know, what was he teaching there when he says, go tear down the flagpole? We're not having a Dharma talk today. So that was something that that woman had left behind in in his no gate gateway for people to 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 meditate on and to to sort out in their minds um you know to help them awaken because some of these this obviously it was um a story meant to to shock and and, and to startle ananda as well right so i leave you these stories today with kind of a a context that what is it that made Mahakashapa the Dharma heir of the Buddha? Was it a story that originated 2,000 years later, 3,000 years later? Um, I guess not 2,000, 1,000 years later. Was it a story that originated 1,000 years later or 1,500 years later uh, with a single flower being held up? Or was it the reality that the Buddha recognized Mahakashapa as his Dharma heir? And then does it really matter? Linji didn't say that he came from a descendant, but he descended all the way from Mahakashapa. He listed the teachers that he had had and he had learned from, right? So I guess what I'm leaving with you today in this discussion is the Buddha gives us a path. He gives us a path of mindfulness. He gives us a path of concentration. And when you are born of that path, you are born of the Buddha. You are born, you receive that transmission that he left for us. And that's why he was the opener of a dispensation. That's why he was the Buddha of our age. Because not that he was the only enlightened one, but that he came and taught others, this is how you can enlighten. This is how you can awaken. So we take those stories, we learn from them what we can, we concentrate on them, we practice our mindfulness, and we sit in meditation and hope that it helps us wake up. And so my encouragement to you is wake up. Thank you.